This is our August 2021 performance figures for our solar PV and Tesla Powerwall 2 here in the UK. Along with our Tesla Model 3, Hyundai Kona electric usage, plus other things have happened during the month. So stay tuned. Hi, John here and welcome. I'm in my photography studio, just in case you're <laughs> wondering why there's a bed in the background. Um, so August 2021, actually lots of things have happened in August. So let me update you on those before we get into our solar stat generation figures. Firstly, my main computer, my iMac has died. Um, it had to be taken to the Genius Bar at the Apple store in Milton Keynes, where it's now undergoing surgery for a new power supply. Uh, what this means is that I'm editing this video on an older machine and the Final Cut Pro version I'm using or will be using once I've finished recording it doesn't have all the plugins and graphics available that my main machine does. But hopefully it won't be too noticeable. I'm sure you'll let me know uh, in the comments down below, but I'll do my best. Other things are Kafia, 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 I never know how to pronounce that. MA120 electric smart meter has not been sending through our half hourly readings to the DCC and Intern Octopus Energy since the 6th of July. Those that watched my update last month, I stated it's an industry wide issue. Kafia have now issued a firmware fix which Octopus Energy have been rolling out to the effective users. And they've been doing this in a targeted rollout, so pushing the update to users who are on metered export tariffs first. And the reason for that is the SMETS2 standard only specifies to hold 93 days of export data. So it makes sense to target those meters first with the fix. Once all those have been done, then they'll update everyone else. I'm in the everyone else pool um, as we're on a deemed export tariff. The fix has been successful to, for those that have had it um, and their meters are now working and Octopus are getting the half hourly reading. So fingers crossed when ours gets it, uh, all will be good. What that does mean, because our meter hasn't been working, is that we've not had an electricity bill since July and Octopus is still unable to calculate our usage without our half hourly usage readings. I guess that's the only downside of being on a smart tariff. Talk of tariffs and bills, um, on the 3rd of August, uh, we moved from the Agile tariff to the Go Faster tariff. I could see that our daily electricity usage would be starting to rise and with insufficient solar to cover this extra consumption, staying on Agile was gonna make it very expensive. In July, Agile prices were dramatically climbing with higher averages across most days. And for us, the Agile tariff was becoming unsustainable, even with a home storage battery. Our Go Faster tariff rates are five hours at 5.5 pence per kilowatt hour, and the rest of the day at 15.33, uh, which includes VAT. We still actually keep the Agile ethos of not using grid electricity between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m., but I guess it's our bit to reduce demand during those peak periods. As you'll see when we look at the day by day chart, we are running one of our glass kilns almost every day at the moment. Our fused glass workshops have picked up and we basically need to run the kilns daily just to keep up with the flow of student work. Most pieces require two firings to complete them and each firing lasts around 12 hours in total. So you can see it soon backs up if you don't keep it on, on top of it. This was another reason for basically why we moved to the GO tariff. We're now running the kilns overnight because there's no guarantee of solar activity like there was in June and July when we could actually run them purely on solar generation. As I said before, they take about six kilowatts from start to finish to, to run on their program. So it's not a lot, but um, obviously if you're doing that at 35 pence an a, um, a kilowatt, it uh, is a bit more expensive than doing it at five pence or even from solar. We've just received our third FIT payment for the year, which covers the third quarter from June to August. The payment was 700, £787.71, 
based on a 56.303 pence per kilowatt generated and a deemed export which is calculated at 50% of our total generation. Year to date we've received £1,804 with one quarter yet to go. <laughs> this is actually one time in my life when being an early adopter has actually paid dividends. Another update to tell you about is the Kona Electric. It went for its two year service or 20,000 miles, which is whichever is sooner. Our mileage was 12,487, so it was two years of ownership that triggered it rather than the mileage. The service was straightforward. They changed the air filter, changed the brake fluid and added screen wash, despite it being topped up beforehand as I'd already checked it, which means they must have drained it to top it up. Um, and then charge me for the privilege. However, the main reason for telling you about this is that it also had a recall notice of 11D043, which is a BMS update and BSA replacements. Um, I asked a service desk person when they told me about that this needed to be done, you know, what was it? They said they didn't know, but would go and find out. They went to go and ask a technician and upon returning they said it's an update, a bit like when you update your phone. So I could see I was not going to make any progress there and I said I would find out myself what the actual update included. So I contacted Hyundai UK directly to ask them the question and the outcome is still rather vague, as you can see here from the, the tweet response that I got. Um, and I have actually fed back my dissatisfaction to the dealership of their lack of knowledge and um, ownership of the problem. This sort of event prompted me to write to Hyundai UK directly and on the 17th of August I wrote a letter of complaint about the lack of knowledge of the service staff at the dealership and also went on to say that they basically rendered our car a bit of a dead duck. And by that I mean um, many of the dealerships are not taking Kona's in part exchange because of the battery issue. So we sort of cannot sell it until the battery pack has been replaced. Four months on from the recall letter back in April, we still haven't heard anything of when that's likely to be. We're wary about charging it, driving it, even leaving it on our driveway. The recall updates have reduced the charge rate and reduced its range. In effect, it's now not the same car as was advertised when we purchased it. I've requested that they initiate a buyback of our car. I'll keep you informed on the outcome of this request. 14 days have passed and no responses yet. The Tesla app was updated uh, towards the end of August to version 4 and then version 4.01 within 24 hours of release. There are some really great improvements for the car side of things. You can now see the internal and external temperatures, heat the windscreen from the app, plus a host of other small improvements and additions, which are all very, very beneficial. The new app is not great, in my opinion, from a power wall perspective. The display of the data is not as clear and easy to read as the previous version. You know, perhaps that's down to familiarity with the layout and with time. Um, it will become a lot easier to, to read at a glance. Um, but sort of uh, a week on and I'm still struggling a bit. However, the main gripe is that there is a data set that's now missing from the app in this latest version and more about that later. Finally, before we get into our stats, here is some quality driving on our UK road captured on our Tesla cam in August. There's no sound recorded, just footage. And in all of the footage, I'm sticking to below or actually at the posted speed limit for these roads. So I'm not you know, I'm running around like a lunatic.
So, UK driving, marvellous. So let's move on to the stats for the month of August, shall we? I'll bring up a graphic on screen which you can pause the video and review if you want to. Alternatively, have a look in the description down below of this video. There's a complete list of all of our system components and specifications. Let's have a look at our solar PV generation numbers. For August 2021, with our south-southwest facing 6.34 kilowatt array, we produced a total of 620 kilowatt hours from the two arrays. Our average daily solar generation was 20 kilowatt hours for the month, which as you can see is way down on the last four months figures. Our little group of solar watchers on Twitter uh, have been using a standard measure to compare each other's solar generation results. And this measure gives a sort of better understanding of solar performance as it removes the variable of size of the array. The bigger the array, obviously, the more it was going to be, be producing. So to calculate this measure is actually very easy. It's your total generation figure for your period divided by the size of your solar array. So for ours example, it's 620 kilowatt hours for the period divided by 6.4 kilowatt worth of panels, which works at 96.8 or 97 per kilowatt panel. Down below, please drop your generation totals and your kilowatt PP performance, kilowatt panel performance in the comments. As always, it does provide a great comparison for other people proves very, very popular. People chat about it and comment on it. Uh, so it creates good discussion. And as I've said before, I really like looking at it as well and always comment and pick up on people's uh, input. So thank you in advance for that. If we look at the two arrays, our four kilowatt array produced 395 kilowatt hours and our newer 2.34 array produced 225. Let's have a look at the um, self power of solar and power wall and how we fared during the month. We spent the month on cost saving mode basically with the power wall, which meant we often pulled from the grid during off peak between uh, 12.30 and 5.30 in the morning to charge the battery. Um, we were self powered. You might hear a helicopter going over, which is quite low. Very low, in fact bit of background noise it's sort of rattling oh, it's heading off over there um, so we were self-powered from the power wall and solar contributions for 73% of the month as you can see from the stack chart the 40% came from the solar generation and 33% came from the power wall contribution and you can clearly see the hit in solar generation on this chart 40% is equivalent to September 2020 autumn clearly upon us here in the East Midlands in the UK. If we have a look at the year on year, this chart compares the months of August for 2012 through to 2021. Values from 2020 onwards are for both arrays, whereas before they're just for the four single, for the four kilowatt array. The 620 is way behind last year's total of 702. The second array has helped push the figure above the rest of the values, which would have been just for the four original, the, for the original four kilowatt array. Getting my words all mixed up in order. Uh, power wall in and out chart. So this maps what we've sent to the power wall and what we've returned and the round trip efficiency. And I say it, it sort of used to map because the Tesla update to the app towards the end of the month that I was telling you about, you now cannot see the two, the power wall data. So what's sent to the power wall. It only shows how much solar generation was sent to the power wall. And if the power wall charges overnight from cheap electricity from the grid, it doesn't show how much went to the power wall anymore. So it's a bit of an oversight in my opinion. And even if you download the data, it's still not there. So what it basically means is I'm going to drop this chart for my monthly stats going forward as the data now is meaningless. Um, I've included the data just to prove the point. So if you look at August data, it shows that the power was 99% efficiency for its round trip efficiency, which obviously wasn't the case. 
because there's more that went to it than is actually recorded in the app. So, goodbye chart, we won't be seeing you again. This is the day by day chart, which gives you a little bit more detail on what's happened day by day. Every day bar one, the house usage shown in blue is outstripped solar production, which was shown in yellow. Our lowest recorded solar day was on the 30th of August at seven kilowatt hours for the day. It was a month of two halves really, a strongish start and then cloud city for the remainder of the month. Um, sometimes we didn't see the, the sun for you know two three days. Um, still generated a bit but obviously not that much and not consistent. The grid pull is shown in red and the spikes you'll see is where we ran the glass kilns overnight in the early hours of the morning. Um, the big spike on the 18th is when we also charged the Tesla Model 3. Um, also included in those red columns is any overnight charging with the power wall as well. Um, so, so all in all, August was a fairly heavy month for power usage. Um, we used mainly, well almost all, cheap off-peak rate electricity for those red peaks that you see there. Scrolling down this chart shows those four data sources that were just looked at in the day by day. House usage shown in blue is um, perhaps the key one to have a look at. So it's 938.6 uh, uh, kilowatt hours versus our solar total of 620, which you already know about. We'll look at the other two figures in a little bit more detail now. So let's scroll on and have a look at those. So this is our average daily house usage and our average daily grid usage over the months. Actually, not surprisingly, our average daily house usage was up at 30 kilowatt hours. That's the blue line. And our average daily pull from the grid was also up at 11.1 .1 kilowatt hours, which is the red line. In terms of what we sent back to the grid, uh, we sent 36 kilowatt hours of excess solar generation back to the grid in August. So just a tad over one kilowatt hours per day over the course of the month, so nothing too tragic. In terms of what we pulled from the grid, this shows that we consumed 345 kilowatt hours from the grid for the month. And I've already mentioned that the whys and wherefores on that total, so shan't go into that again. So have a look at the eddy. So the My Energy eddy heats our hot water from surplus solar. Obviously not a lot of solar, so not a lot of eddy. It diverted 37 kilowatt hours of solar generation to heat our hot water for the month. So 288 kilowatt hours for the year and a running total of 756. The costings have got a question mark again against them due to the lack of electricity bills but because of the smart meter half hourly issue I spoke about at the beginning of the video but I'll update those as soon as I get a bill through. Finally moving on to the cars the Tesla Model 3 covered 898 miles during the month bringing its total to 14,156 miles. No issues or problems to report. We did three supercharging sessions and one public charging session where we added a total of 112.44344 kilowatt hours. There's a, yeah, 112.44 kilowatt hours, all for no costs. Um, we actually used a supercharger in South Mims for the first time, which was really busy. Uh, it was on Saturday morning and luckily as we arrived, a space opened up. Um, so we were able to plug in and charge straight away. We were there for 20 minutes and in and out, but it was a busy old place. Home charging on the Tesla, we added 127.74 kilowatt hours. 40% of our total charge for the month came from sunshine with 102.21 kilowatt hours coming from the grid. Um, the Tesla had two over the air software, soft, <laughs> the Tesla had two over the air software updates during the month. I won't go into the details of those updates, but, so there's plenty of videos covering those updates in a lot more detail. So we're now on 2021.24.4. The Kona that covered 161 miles in the month and now has a total mileage of 12,597. I've always already mentioned about its two-year service. 
nothing else to report apart from what I've already stated. So that's it. Any questions then dive down into the comments below and I'll pick them up from there. As usual, please comment, like, share, all of those good actions help get this video shown to more people and help my channel grow. So I would appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. <laughs> Take care. Bye.